Hello, hi, hola, handle and greetings. So you want a curtain or some drapes without the hassle of simulation? Curves are here to help. Let's make this a fast one, shall we? You can add endless details on your time. You know, all my videos are long, so this is going to be as quick as we can do it. Let's do something like a table by making two circles. One's the bottom of the tablecloth fabric with big curves, and the other circle is the top where curves and wrinkles are smaller. Subdivide appropriately. If you try like the Dickens to scale each control point and handles combination with individual pivot points, you will go nuts. The secret, apparently, is to select either the control point or the handles. I don't know why, but that's what you got to do. We scale them, move them, tweak it. I tweaked mine a lot to learn that and ended up with two wrinkly circles with different vertex counts. That's a bad idea. That'll make your life harder later. I'll show you. Select both those wiggly circle curves and join them together the regular way with Control J on the keyboard and then click the object menu to convert them joined circles to a mesh. This part's a cakewalk. Select all edges in edit mode, duh, and click whichever mouse button you still use to get that context menu, bridge the edge loops. Ta-da! Since this example had different vertex counts, there's a lot of triangles where we would ideally prefer four-sided polygons. Bridging them isn't a problem, but shaping the draped fabric and UV unwrapping the object is time-consuming. To close the top, I selected the top edge and pressed Control F in the context menu for faces and found grid fill. That is one of my all-time favorite mesh solutions, and it's totally undervalued in instructional videos like this. So there you go, grid fill. Now it's just a matter of finesse. Bevel with Control B, move, and use Control V to smooth and relax vertices and polish that tabletop to tablecloth transition. This is really a lot easier if you manage your vertex counts correctly in the beginning, like I said. Okay, look at that, a table. And there's like a checkered pattern. Let's make a curtain. It's easier. It's a lot easier. One curve that's scaled straight along the y-axis can be subdivided and then copied in object mode it becomes another curve up above. I do the copy in object mode only to make selecting control points easier. You could copy the curve in edit mode, but then you're going to have like control point on top of control point from a top-down view. Lower the resolution of the curves. This will produce less edges later on when we convert the joined curves to mesh. It's just more manageable. One curve at a time, subdivide the way you want, and move and scale and generate wrinkles the way you want. You're an artist and you're beautiful. Work between individual origins as pivot points to scale handles and the median point to move or rotate or whatever on mass. Using individual origins as the pivot point makes scaling super easy when we're using just a curve, not a circle. My next favorite thing is letting Blender decide what vertex I work on with select, random select. Even though it's called random select, you can select everything and opt to randomly deselect every time you use it. Blender picks a new seed each time. I love this because as a human machine, I might randomly pick vertices, but with random in air quotes. Like my personal random probably isn't very random. This way, however, Blender really picks new random selections and my tendencies won't show or affect the project. Now here's the thing about matching vertex counts from curve to curve. The bottom curve has half as many subdivisions as the top curve. That's because the wrinkles are bigger and they don't need so much fidelity. I'll select all the control points and subdivide once more to double the vertex count. I copied the curve beforehand to examine any shape changes and you might agree with me the handles all shrank on the one I doubled the vertex count on but the shape itself merely got smoother and maintained its profile or curve. Okay cool. Let's zip along, join those curves, make them an it, convert it to a mesh, bridge the edge loops, and how about a material? See how uneven that shading is, even when it's shade smooth? Blender hates you. 
Control R some loop cuts, like a lot of loop cuts, after you unwrap this bad boy. After, after you unwrap this bad boy. After you unwrap this bad boy. Blender will like you and eliminate that sharp shading. I'm pretty sure that's just the return of an old bug and those long, long polygons from a curtain we just made are awfully bad practice for modeling in 3D. I present you with the worst cloth material I ever made, but it's got some basic considerations. A blend between opacities, just like fabric, and the area between stitches, but this one's crappy. Unwrapping a curtain isn't a total nightmare, but if you unwrap along active quads, pick length, to minimize distortions, You'll still have to tweak things a bit in the UV editor, but it's not murderous, okay? You should spend some brain power there, but once it's done, it's done for good. I've smashed in a couple walls. I plugged in a neon, eon text object light to say we're open and add uh, one more important detail to that curtain material. See my nodes? Copy my nodes and add this to the nodes. See what just a little translucency did to the light through the curtain? It's good stuff, right? That's a good detail to remember, and I know it does knock your renders up for time. It pregnifies your render times, if that's a measurement you're willing to use. Since we love curves, let's do one more winning curve. Let's put some, put wind, some wind in those, in those curtains. curtains. Here's a straight, as it comes from Shift A, Bezier curve. Unmodified, unchanged. Have the curtain mesh modify to follow the curve. Crappy. Switch to weight paint mode and press the alt button before clicking and dragging the left mouse button from the edge of the mesh. When your mesh is in a good viewing angle, gradient of weight. Nice, right? Back into 3D view mode window and wham! Moving the curtain or that curve makes wind. Have a happy time. Do nice things to this YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.